In this video, we will be going over the Trendelenburg gait, how it typically presents, then we will go over the relevant anatomy, as well as go over a compensation that may occur. Here, my classmate is demonstrating weakness in the left hip abductors. We see that this is causing her to fall out to her left side, resulting in a hip drop on the right side. In a Trendelenburg gait, we have weakness of the hip abductors on one side with a contralateral hip drop, or to put it more simply, a hip drop on the side opposite of the weak hip. The hip abductors abduct the leg, and while we walk, their main job is to keep the pelvis stable, which helps with foot clearance. From a sagittal view, we can see how this condition may cause a decrease in step length. You can imagine that as the hip falls out to the side and the abductors are fatiguing, there may be a need to shorten the stride to prevent a fall or to prevent a loss of balance. Here we have a side view of a left lower leg. Circled is the left gluteus maximus, a large muscle that extends and externally rotates the femur. After removing the gluteus maximus, we reveal more of the gluteus medius, and under that we see the gluteus minimus. Together, the gluteus minimus and medius work to abduct the leg, or in other words, kick the leg out to the side at the hip. Now, because I am a visual person, I went ahead and MacGyvered this pipe cleaner contraption. This is a crude representation of the line of pull of the gluteus medius muscle, which is represented by this red pipe cleaner here. The gluteus medius originates roughly in this area between the anterior gluteal line and the posterior gluteal line. It goes on to attach to our femur on the side of our greater trochanter here. The greater trochanter being the bigger bump on our thigh bone. Again, this is a crude representation. Consult an anatomy book for a more detailed visual. If this muscle were to lose tension and begin to give away while standing on one leg, we can see how the opposite side of the hip will begin to drop down like so. And if we create tension in the gluteus minimus, the pelvis will become level again. A compensation we may see in response to weak abductors is a trunk lean towards the affected side, which reduces the work the affected muscles need to do to keep us upright. This shifts the center of gravity over the affected limb, minimizing the moment arm, which minimizes the force placed on the weak muscles. The patient may also have a hip height present on the side opposite the weakness to help with foot clearance, as we see here. In this video, we are still demonstrating left-sided weakness. This gait pattern is not only a reaction to hip abductor weakness, this gait may also be the result of other hip pathologies, such as osteoarthritis of the hip, since with this gait pattern, forces on the hip are reduced, and the amount of hip and knee flexion needed for ambulation is also reduced on the stance leg.